Uh, before we get started, I wanted to apologize for uh, this episode because I got a little more passionate and excited and uh, used some swear words that I should not have. So we went back and dubbed over uh, the words and comment with the time and see if you can figure out where I said some things I should not have. Uh, we want to keep this family friendly, so uh, we're going to dub that out and not swear during the show. Thanks. Hey everyone, welcome back to The Fin Factor, episode number seven. Yet. <laughs> Doing Spanish on the show now. Hi, my name is Paul. And I'm Aaron. Uh, lucky number seven episode, if you are. Siete. C. Si. Whatever. <laughs> yeah, awesome. So, uh, if you recall, last week we had a um, t-shirt giveaway. We're going to reveal who uh, who won the t-shirt yep. uh, this week. Yeah. Uh, we're also going to talk about a player that we had mentioned before the Sharks might have a chance of picking up. And uh, that's actually not happening. So <laughs> <laughs> again, uh, that's totally okay. Yeah. Uh, from there, we got a couple of the topics we're going to chat about. Uh, we'll update about Josh Norris yes. and uh, talk about uh, the, there was a confidence poll on the athletic. Since mm-hmm. It's kind of a slow time. That's right. And we're also the Sharks ring. Yeah. Yeah, and we're going to talk about some of our uh, favorite and least favorite goal songs <laughs> in the NHL, and um, I guess what the Sharks would uh, change to if it were up to us. Yep. Yeah. And then uh, the bobblehead. Uh, that the Warriors are going to be giving ah, away this year. They released it. It's it pretty cool. It is a good one. It's a very good yeah. one. Okay, well, are you ready to start the show? Let's do it. Okay. Go ahead. I think uh, I think Aaron might have got a piece of popcorn stuck in those braces. Yeah, <laughs> sorry about that. Mm-hmm. I hope my orthodontist doesn't watch this because <laughs> they're not supposed to eat popcorn. <laughs> nice. Whoops. Uh, so uh, we had the uh, the T-shirt giveaway, and we're gonna go ahead and tell you guys who won that after we talk about uh, the rest of the stuff on the show. Gotcha. Um, yeah. So the first thing we wanted to talk about was a guy that we were talking about earlier in um, the season. Yeah. Um, the Fin Factor season. Yeah, possible target for yeah. the Sharks. And it was uh, Jeff Jeff Skinner yep. and uh, some news with Jeff Skinner today. Or yep. today. But uh, a couple of days ago, but he got yeah. he got traded to Buffalo, mm-hmm. which is a great move for him. Uh, he's going to be close to his hometown of Toronto. It's only like a two-hour drive. Mm-hmm. And uh, uh, Buffalo, man, they, they I think they got a great deal yeah. on Skinner. Uh, almost reminds me of the Kane deal that the Sharks got. I think it's going to be in hindsight the Buffalo Sabres definitely won this trade. Nice. So they traded uh, to Carolina Poo <laughs> and three draft picks. Poo. They traded, they traded Poo. I'm not making this up. P-U. So his last name is Poo. I, I could be butchering his name. It could be P. I, I, it, there should be an H at the end of that if that was the case. But right, but it's it's Poo. Poo. All right. They poo. traded Poo. Poo and three draft picks. Uh, so that that's pretty awesome. Uh, but well, the, but the, okay. The draft picks. It was a second. It was a second for this upcoming draft. Third round for the following yeah. year, and a sixth round in yeah. the following year. So, so they still, I'd take Jeff Skinner over all that. So that's that seems like a very low bar. And yeah, I feel like the Sharks probably could have traded more than Poo. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> I cannot take this segment seriously. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know. I I I think. Um, uh, he had uh, Skinner had a no trade clause too, so yeah. he had to waive it. He and wanted to go to Buffalo, so maybe they tried. Maybe the yeah. Sharks tried. We don't know. Yeah. So uh, or maybe they didn't. You know, it kind of reminds me actually of Minnesota um, when when Gary I'm not Gary Wow uh, Ryan Suter <laughs> and geez, that's a throwback name. Uh, no, when Ryan Suter and Zach Parise decided they were going to go to Minnesota, um, so however, however many years ago, and they said they wanted to make Minnesota a destination place for you know for our destination city for. Yeah. For hockey, and um, it sounds like that's kind of what's happening in Buffalo right now. Is you've got Jack Eichel who's healthy, you've mm-hmm. got Dolan who just got drafted, and mm-hmm. you've got um, what's his name Skinner showing up over there now. I mean, that's, that's some good young yeah. talent. They have that's a, lot a of other young solid too. core. They've been, they've been accruing over the yeah. last couple of years, but that's a good solid core. Just yeah. those three, you know. Um, and then yeah, you've got some other guys. Yeah, Skinner's same as Kane. He's twenty six years old, mm-hmm. so he's very young, mm-hmm. and it's the last year of his. Contract, so he's going into an UFA year, but yeah. I'm sure they. I wouldn't be surprised if they extend him oh, already. He'll he'll absolutely be extended. I mean, if if he said I'm going to waive my no trade clause to go to Buffalo, I mean, 
unless he has some horrible experience in Buffalo and changes his mind throughout the course of the year, he's definitely re-signing in Buffalo. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think uh, a trade this trade would have worked a year or two ago. I think Skinner mm-hmm. would have nixed it. He would have been like, no, I'm not going to Just Buffalo. looking at the talent that they're yeah. now. Yeah. And, yeah, and they've been, you know, bottom of the barrel for a couple of years now. Mm-hmm. And it's sad because Buffalo, like, right around, uh, what was it, after the original lockout in 04? Yeah. They came out and they were one of the top teams in the East, um, and they have not been doing much since. So it's yeah. kind of, I'm kind of glad to see them getting better. Yeah. I like seeing parity. I like seeing teams that have been bad. And yeah, yeah. And, and back and forth. That and seesaw effect, yeah. up and down kind of thing. Yeah. yeah, and I like watching these young guys come into mm-hmm. the league and doing some damage. So yeah, it's fun. Absolutely. Well, speaking of young guys coming into the league, yep. um, Josh Norris. Mm-hmm. Prospect for the Sharks, uh, first round pick. First round the prior year. Prior year, right. Uh, 19th overall, I think? Yeah, yeah. I think so. Um, had a couple big goals uh, recently here. He Playing for Team USA. Yep. Yeah. So this is like a, was a mini tournament tryout kind of for the champion, the, uh, what's it called, the World Championship or the World, I can't think of the name of the tournament. It's in December. Mm-hmm. Um, so he was trying out for Team USA and they played against Sweden? Yeah, Sweden. Uh, so he had the tying goal. Yeah. And then he had the winner in overtime. Yep. And uh, if you watch his goals, we'll, we'll put the link up in the corner, sure, but yeah. you can see the two goal, or you can see all the goals from the game, the highlights mm-hmm. of the game. Um, nothing flashy. Nothing. Uh, yeah. He was in the right place at the right time. Uh, I don't know who the other guy was, but he did look like he did all the work. <laughs> I can't remember the first name, um, unique first name, but the last name was Hughes. And I think thought he was a Vancouver prospect. I'm probably wrong on that. Um, I think they both came out of Michigan, though, um, Wolverines. Mm-hmm. And I just thought that was really unique that um, they both played for the Wolverines, and they're both sophomores. And they both made Team USA. They played on the same line, which makes sense to me if you're going to have those two guys on, on the same team, keep playing them together. Um, and they both contributed um, heavily to the win against Sweden. Sweden came out swinging. They got uh, a couple goals right out of the shoot. Were, I think it was the yeah. first shot on goal was a breakaway yeah, yeah. and he scored. And then uh, they had the like, lead. I think the entire game. For yeah, most of the game. yeah. It was it two and a half minutes in or something? Like they had another mm-hmm. goal. I mean, um, USA's goalie had a, a bit of a hard start there, but you know uh, they buckled he was down and to dry on a few of those calls well, too. <laughs> sure, but I mean, that's still a tough start yeah. having to start off with a breakaway. <laughs> yeah. year, right. Um, but yeah, no, I, I, they they came out on top and uh, Norris had a, a good game. Uh, he was like you said he's in the right place right time and just one of those things that's really hard to teach is hockey smart you can teach mm-hmm. skill all you want uh, that's one of the things I always talk about on the show too Chris Tierney and how good he is and I think you know he's one of the smartest players and he was voted I think as one of the smartest players from wherever he came from mm-hmm. and um, you know if it looked like Norris was just in the right place right time for, for those goals Hughes did do a lot of work I want to give credit where credit's due uh, if you take a look at those highlights Hughes is just dancing through some some of the Sweden players and makes a nice beautiful pass over to, to Norris. He just yeah. taps it right on in. Um, but you know, again, you, you got you got to have a little bit of luck uh, to be to be good. You got to be good to have some good luck. And he was right there. Yep. Yeah, he got the winner. <laughs> yeah, um, I think he's going to be the kind of player that's uh, almost like a coacher. Yeah, type yeah. player. Uh, he's going to be very good on both ends of the ice. Mm-hmm. Uh, so he could be a good shutdown centerman as well as produce a playmaker. Yeah, um, I think um, I think we might see him maybe in a year or two. I don't think we'll see him much at yeah. all this year, if any. Uh, he could be one of those guys that comes up for nine games, or if there's an injury, he could fill in, get you know just a taste of the NHL at some right. point. Maybe after college is done, we see that a lot of times when when the college season is done, they'll call some guys up towards the end of the regular season before playoffs to get them some experience yeah or even fill in uh during the playoffs mm-hmm. if they have an injury again mm-hmm. so maybe this year maybe a little bit most likely you see more of him next year um and you know we have a lot of those players next year it's going to be rough he could be one of those guys that plugs in one of the holes so yeah um, we could see him a lot more regularly next year yeah, and I'm sure that'd be a welcomed addition to the team. You know, mm-hmm. uh, another another good young, solid centerman. Um, again, two way game seems like it's it's coming along great. He took a bit of a hit uh, offensively mm-hmm. this past season, and in, I mean, in your words, you know, he was basically taking the hit because he had other things he needed to work on. You know, he knew that he had the defensive side of the game that he wanted to work on, and um, you know, hats off to him for for you know, working on that stuff, making sure he's a complete player, being. Uh, 
a good all around player. And um, yeah, I think good for him because he was already drafted yeah. in the first round. So he doesn't have to worry about working hard on the points to get drafted. Yeah. Now he can focus on being a better complete player. Right. So that's what he focused on last year. And I think he mentioned in an article that he was going to focus on his offense this year, uh, this upcoming year. Right. To bring that back up. So it'll be interesting it was. to see if we get an uptick in offense. And mm-hmm. um, so that it's it's more reassuring that, you know, he's not uh, he's not falling off, in yeah. other words. Yeah. Right. You know, and the other thing was uh, his, his face off percentage, yeah. I think, was was really good. It was like uh, 56 percent, something yeah. like that. Um, so yeah, you know, it's just on the same token uh, uh, that we've been talking about here. You know, he's he's looking to become that all-around, uh, well-rounded player. Um, they did relate him to a Logan Couture, and if we can get another Logan Couture on the team, I'm all for it. <laughs> yeah. um, so uh, just just another guy, you know, to look forward to. Uh, I guess he he played in Germany or something for a few years um, yeah. before. Or no, I'm sorry, his his dad was in Germany. He lived in Germany for like ten years or something. Well, his like dad that. played in the NHL yeah. briefly, like. I think 20 games or yeah, so. Yeah, yeah, Which I think helps because, um, you know, the best coaches aren't always the best players. Mm-hmm. Um, and the best players don't always make the best coaches. Yeah. So, uh, you know, not being the best player, but getting a taste of the NHL and seeing what it takes to get to that level. Yeah, yeah. And then you have a kid who is very talented. You can get them that, not experience, but, yeah. you, but you have that ex- hunger. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You can explain Give them that to drive. Them. Yeah. And I think you see a lot of that. I mean, there's a lot, we see a lot of currently NHL mm-hmm. players that we grew up watching and their sons are playing now. Yeah, yeah. Which is a trip. To Chuck, yeah. Domi, and yeah. you know, all those guys for sure. So you, you see that and it's also kind of a, uh, almost a legacy type thing too, where someone plays the stats, yeah. he's another one. His oh, dad, yeah, yeah, yeah. He's in the Hall of Fame, I think. Yeah. So um, you see a lot of that, a lot of, uh, a lot of that stuff, so it's good. Yeah. It's good for him. Yeah. So um, going to our next point about uh, the athletic did a poll on confidence poll. Actually, uh, before we do that, I just realized that I still have my glasses on, so I'm uh, gonna take these off. All right. <laughs> but anyway, go uh, fire away. Uh, uh, on the athletic, the Sharks. Um, there was a confidence poll where they polled, I think, some uh, the public. So I guess fans of teams and had them rank their teams and then they ranked them based on public opinion right, I don't right. know, you, we'll link it to the show so you can see it uh it is behind a paid firewall though if you're not a fan of the or a uh, subscriber to the athletic yeah um anyway the sharks were ranked number 10 out of 31 and i think this kind of goes back on what we've been talking about in the last you know our first couple episodes about what doug wilson's been doing mm-hmm. um how great of a gm he is for how long he's yeah. been yeah. around. And that's not just because the owner is lazy and thinks, you know, doesn't want to find a new GM. Like he does. He makes us job. competitive. Again, I'd said it over and over and over again on this show. He makes us competitive every year. And I understand we haven't won a cup yet, but there's a lot of teams that haven't won a cup in a very long, uh, long time or that haven't won a cup at all. Uh, and I just think that. <coughs> Toronto. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. That's a long time. Uh, it was Blues. Blues have never won a cup, have they? Uh, I don't think St. No. Louis has ever won a cup. No. Yeah. But so Toronto goes back to the 60s. And yeah, Toronto's a long time. Yeah, they haven't they, even been to the finals <laughs> since they've won the cup yeah. in the 60s. Yeah. Oh, but, okay, so the point is it, we're not the only ones, okay? And we're one of the younger franchises who are not the only ones. Right. So, um, yeah, I don't know. I just, I, I get it. I get that where the hate comes from. But I think when you look at the successes, I know we haven't won a cup, so I know people are going to say there's no success. But when you look at the successes of constantly making it into the playoffs, constantly having the chance to do that, never mm-hmm. having to go through a complete rebuild, always being able to retool and still be successful in terms of you know having a, a better than 500 season and being able to make the playoffs and get past the first round. Mm-hmm. I mean, there are times we get bounced, but hey, everybody does. Um, I don't know. That to me is is success. Like it's not the ultimate success, but it is success. So I can understand where they would rank us number ten out of the thirty one teams because yeah, we've we've had a pretty good record of being a very competitive team. You also have to think of you know hockey is a business. Mm-hmm. So sure, you know everyone wants to win the cup. Right now, there's thirty teams that won't win a cup every year, mm-hmm. but be one of those teams that that puts a very good product on the ice. A good entertaining product because you got to sell seats. Right. It is a business. So Doug Wilson has done a very good job of having entertaining teams, mm-hmm. having a mix of superstars and stars and non-stars, hardworking right. players. Right. Um, you know, ever since Joe Thornton came, I think that's really changed the franchise. Oh putting yeah. Putting him to the next level. Absolutely. And 
they've they've dropped a little bit as they've gotten older and mm-hmm. some players leave, but um, I think they've kept themselves relevant uh, in the top ten teams in the NHL. Yeah, yeah consistently. consistently. Um, I think he's very well respected in the league. Yeah, I think uh, I think he's he's made there's there's he's not perfect. Mm-hmm. There's some moves, and I'm sure he regrets or or in hindsight looks back and goes, yeah, maybe I shouldn't have done that. But um, you also have to take chances when you're in that position. Right. Um, I am glad that he doesn't kind of bow to the pressure of media fans, whatever, of yeah. not doing anything yeah. and doing something just to do something mm-hmm. and talk about it. I think there's a lot more frustration from fans. And I also think there's a lot of frustration from fans because they've been so successful that yeah. they get almost spoiled in a way right. of we make the playoffs every year, but we can't get any further than yeah, yeah, yeah. second round, first round, whatever, you know? And it it builds over and over and over the years. Um, there's more, the bar gets set higher. Like you should be doing this. And then right. you know, the it's, sh- we've been here before, right? Yeah. We've seen this already. Give me something new. Well. Again, that to me, that's on the players. But if we're talking about you know the the front office and them again being ranked you know tenth out of the thirty one teams, I mean to me that makes sense. We take a look at, at um, trading. I think trading he was rated fairly well on on uh, his ability to make a trade. Mm-hmm. And we go back to what we've said previous on the show as well. He's not looking to just make his team. You're not trying to screw the other guy over, right? And just make his team better and to hell with them. He's building those long lasting relationships. Like you've just said, you know, he's respected around the league um, by other GMs. Mm-hmm. And I think that helps with some of the trades that he makes, right? Yeah. Um, so I don't know. I think, uh, you know, all around he's he's been great as a GM. I think scouting and whatnot, there's some changes that have happened recently with the scouting department. Uh, Burke moved up to the assistant GM mm-hmm. and Doug Wilson Jr is now head of scouting, if yeah. I recall correctly. Yeah. Um, so we'll see how that shakes things up in terms of their ability to scout. Frankly, I don't think there was much of a problem with their ability to scout. I think it was just those high-end picks, high-end picks, the the first rounders, they're they're later in the first round. Yeah. So the expectation of getting a first round pick and having them develop and, and, and become something that's you know useful to the team, sometimes that doesn't pan out. I will say this, Norris and more recently Merkley, that looks like it could be two big home runs for Doug Wilson's scouting department. Yep. Um, it, it looks like we're going to get another, you know, Logan Couture light. Um, Probably a second line center. Maybe a, yeah, his, a very good second yeah, line center. I think you know, that we we're talking about ceilings last time. We don't yeah. know what Norris's ceiling is going to be, but I think it's safe to say he could, you know, potentially hit that second line center. Probably be like a sixty point guy. Sure. Kind of like Logan Couture, like mm-hmm. uh, thirty goal, thirty assists. Yeah. Something like that kind of uh, that mixture, but mm-hmm. uh, also very good defensively. Yeah. Faceoffs is is huge. Yeah, so probably a guy is going to kill penalties mm-hmm. and shut down uh, the top line of the other team. See, and 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 I say um, I could see him as that second line center guy, um, mainly because he does have a good two way game. If you recall, uh, what I said for my money, my my number one C is more offensively charged. Uh, this is a guy who you don't give up everything on the defensive side of it, but he's more focused on offense, offense, offense. And with Josh, this isn't a knock on on Norris. Um, he seems like he's working on his all around game, which is great. But again, for me, I don't see that as like my number one guy. Um, I could definitely see him stepping into a number two spot. Um, I don't know what that means for Logan Couture necessarily, but well, we're talking years time, out. Yeah, yeah, by the time he's there, either Logan's not on the Sharks yeah. or he's bumped up to the number one seat at that point. Yeah, could be. So, yeah, that'd be a pretty deadly combo having those two shut down. Yeah, and we're still we're not even talking about Dylan Gambrell right. or Auntie Sumella. If yeah. I'm totally butchering his name again, yeah. <laughs> but I mean, there's you no. Know, it seems like we got a pretty good, uh, pretty good. Uh, what do you call it? Stock in the shelves, if you will. Yeah. You know, not not, not too not bad. Not a ton, not not bad. Yeah, but not an abundance either. Sure, compared to other teams, yeah. other teams have a lot more. But I think uh, the Sharks have done well with what they've been given in terms of uh, draft picks. I think um, the Sharks are one of the better teams in the later rounds compared mm-hmm. to other teams. There's a lot of a lot of guys that in the later rounds that they've gotten that have actually played in the NHL, which there's a lot of teams that don't have any. Yeah. So. Um, I mean, they always look at Pavelski because he was a seventh round pick. Yeah, and that's that's a home run. I mean, that's, yeah, he's that's so lucky. Pavelski, yeah, the exception, not the rule, right. obviously. So people go, oh, you could find really good NHL players in the seventh round. You, you 
could, but you're usually not going to. Yeah. That's again an exception to the rule. <laughs> he's he's not he's Especially not the guy that you're gonna. Score. You're usually finding your grinders. Y- yeah. And fourth line guys around there. Yeah. NHL players, but not not goal scorers on the top line. If, if you can find a guy in the seventh round who is a regular on your fourth line, right. that's a win, right? The fact that you found a Pavelski on yeah. the, in the seventh round is just. It's almost like Luke Robitaille. It's uncanny. Luke Robitaille was another guy that is oh, in really? the Hall of Fame, and he was like, I won't even pass the seventh round, I think. Did yeah. not know that. When they used to have way more rounds back Dot in the day. Dot Suk was also a really late round. I think six, maybe. Yeah? Yeah. I'd have to look Man, that if up. you could have picked up Dot Suk. Oh, That'll be a producer note. Yeah. <laughs> Please add that in there, because that's, yeah. that's good good info right there. Anyway, um, back to what we were talking about there. <laughs> it was the Norris. Jeez, we jumped around quite oh, a bit. Oh, the confidence poll. Yeah, the confidence really, poll. Yeah. yeah. So I, I think... Um, I know we're not, our shelves aren't totally stocked right. uh, in terms of um, the scouting and the drafting and whatnot, but I do take a look at the players that I feel are competing for a spot on the NHL roster. And if we don't, just forget about AHL right now, but if we look at the guys that are competing for spots on the NHL roster, I think there's a lot of competition there. Mm-hmm. Um, and I think that that bodes well for the team because you, you got guys pushing each other to make that roster, yeah. right? I and think the Barracuda is going to be exciting to watch. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well. Uh, Norris won't be there because he'll be in college. Right. Merkley won't be there because he'll be at juniors. But um, there'll be some other guys there bouncing around is between the Gen Sharks. Is Brell eligible? I believe so. Okay, so he could play in the Barracuda. Yep. Same with Sumella, yep. right? Yeah. Um, I mean, there's... I don't know. It's going to be some really exciting hockey, if you yeah. ask me. So I'm looking forward to, to all the games. I'm looking forward to the Sharks games. I'm looking forward to the Barracuda games. Yeah. Um, I'm really, especially now, like, you know, I'm a little bit more caught up on, on some of the, the draft picks and some of the more minor uh, players. You know more of those guys. Yeah, I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna to be able to see these guys play, and I'm going to recognize some of them. Something to look forward to, you know. Mm-hmm. And, um, you know are these guys going to get called up? Um, are we going to see these guys next year, see them at the beginning of the season, compare them to the end of the season? Maybe I mean, we'll even do a show. That'd be at great. The Barracuda game. That would be excellent. In fact, let us know if you guys would like us to do yeah. a show at the Barracuda game. Um, maybe we can meet some of you folks out there in the corridor or something like that too. But it'd be great. I think um, there's um, there's a lot of good hockey uh, at yeah. Barracuda Barracuda games. There really is. It's not just all about sharks. Um, these games, just because they're in the AHL. Uh, there's there's some serious hockey being and played out there. And you still get the experience of the arena. Yeah. It's almost like a miniature version because they put the curtains down, right. so it's a little bit more intimate. But mm-hmm. um, very exciting. It's great for kids. Yeah. Love bringing my kids there because it's so easy. Yeah. And getting in and out of there. Yeah, I mean, I've, I've talked about my stories of going yeah. to the Barracuda games with my kids, and, and you know, they love it there. It's, it's lots of fun. If you recall the uh, the frenzy thing, the yeah. dance they do. So <laughs> that's when they when they score the goals over there. They do this whole thing. So speaking of scoring goals, we're going to talk about goal songs yep. and uh, goal songs that uh, maybe we do like, don't like, and things <laughs> we might change about the one that we have. Yeah. So uh, where do you want to start with that? Uh, well, the current shark song. Okay. What do you think? Do you like it? Do you hate it? I, I like it. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I, I've I never really saw a problem with that. I think some people had. You well, know, a lot of people were mad because but, of the original goal song with Gary yeah. Glitter and his whole, you know, touchy feeling yeah. with the kids, and it's not. I I don't um I don't blame the Sharks for changing yeah. it. I'm yeah. glad they changed it. I don't think sure. they should support them at all. So, yeah. um, I think it was a good move. The song was kind of getting a little stale anyway. I think um, sure it's just so we hadn't changed it since ever really. I mean, we had yeah. the but it, just um, that song in general is like such a stereotypical song at sporting events. Yeah, that it's kind of like uh. Yeah, that's true. But it's it, kind of recycled and yeah, yeah. it's exciting when they score and they you. And we sing it. But yeah, um, I think it was it was a good time to change. Speaking of sing it, you wanna you wanna sing it? For no, no, you no. sure? Yeah, oh, that's too definitely bad. sure. That's yeah. a bummer. Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the the they switched to a Nikki Six song for at least a season, and it was awful. And then they switched to this one, which I think is better. Mm-hmm. I, to me, it's like a neutral song. It gets neither good nor bad. Okay. It's just there. So, <laughs> if do you have a song in mind that you would change it to? Um, I I don't know that I would necessarily change it, but if I were to change it, um, I'm I'm a big fan of Andrew WK. <laughs> um, it's it's the same. You're just a party animal. It's the same song. I'm really not. It's though, the that's same beat, same song, every song. It, almost the same words. Let's because, get and, the party started. Let's party hard. Let's party party party. <laughs> uh, there's literally a song called Party 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 from Andrew WK. <laughs> 
um, party hard. Uh, there's, I, I don't know. Um, it's time to party. So that's actually the one that I would, I would, I would potentially. It's time to party. To. It's time to party. No, uh, or part. Which one? Yeah, it's. It, they're all Does the same. It it's all it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. <laughs> Just play Andrew WK and you'll be fine. Uh, no, but um, uh, yeah, I think it's it's time to party. Um, and there's a part where they kind of go like they do the hay right and it's yeah. like some beat and then hay and the the length of time in between the hays it sounds like it's something that the fans would like you know kind of going back with the other hays that we used right. to do right so there are a couple teams that use yeah use him and I don't know if it's that song it's a party song you won't, you won't be I able to no tell idea. because they're all the I have same. no idea <laughs> um, I went and listened through all 31 NHL bless you songs today <laughs> to uh, see if I had any other favorites or not or okay. hate for any. Sure. Anyway, what for my pick, yeah. what I'd want the Sharks to do is uh, try and get Metallica to write something. Oh, yeah. I think that would be awesome. They use Seek and Destroy for the entrance. Yeah. I think they could come up with something. So, in my research, uh, I didn't even know this, <laughs> Dallas has Pantera uh, wrote a song That's for the Dallas cool. Stars. And they've been doing it since 1999. They wrote it in 1999, and it was the year they won the Cup. So, of course... They get Pantera to write him a song. Yeah. They use it for the goal song. They win a cup that year. Why would you ever change it? Exactly. So, um, so, so that, you're trying to recreate the magic. You want Metallica to well, write a song if, so that we can win a cup. What happens? Is that, like Metallica's <laughs> a sharks are sharks fans. Yeah. yeah. Uh, they're semi-local, kind of they, like Bay Area local. They're, 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 they're Bay Area ties. Yeah. I don't think they live here anymore. Okay. But uh, probably got too expensive. <laughs> I thought <laughs> Hetfield said he wanted to get out of the elitist oh, he did. attitude. He or whatever moved it was. out of here. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but anyway, whenever they're like touring and they're yeah. in town, they usually stop by Sharks games and yeah. open the door. They right. do a Metallica night. Right. They do a Metallica night at the Giants. Mm -hmm. um, anyway, I would get them to write something. I don't know how much that would cost. I'm sure it wouldn't be cheap. I don't think it would really matter. To be well, you never know. If because they're such they're big fans, fans, they may just say, you know what, we're just going to do it for you guys. I think it'd be sweet. Yeah. Um, so you don't have a song in mind that you would change it to. You would just say, tell Metallica, write me a song. I'm a big Metallica fan, and... There's nothing that would be great for a goal song, I don't mm -hmm. think. Um, I think it would be cool if they just wrote something. Yeah. A little 30-second song. Sure. Yeah. Maybe a minute. Just whatever. Yeah. Um, anyway, I thought it was cool that Dallas uses Pantera. <laughs> or a Pantera. <laughs> sure, yeah. Written specifically for the Dallas Stars right. song. I no, that is. really cool. That, I mean, it's unique, right? Yeah. You're not going to get the Hay situation. Right. The Gary Glitter. You're also, everybody else is using it. Yeah, you're also not going to get another team using it. Yeah. Because it's for the Dallas Stars. We, Solid. It's cool. Yeah. I don't like the Dallas Stars, but I think it's cool. <laughs> I think it's cool. I respect it. I respect it. How about that? Okay, fair enough. Yeah. yeah. We can respect other teams. So, we've disrespected uh, teams plenty on the oh, show. All the time. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, your favorite non shark goal song? Yes. What was so, yours? So, um, you, you just got done saying you're a big fan of Metallica. I also know that you're a big fan of ACDC. Like, yes. If you're a fan of ACDC, you are not as big a fan as Aaron is. <laughs> That's basically what it comes down to. Well, okay. funny enough, it with Andrew WK yeah. uh, ACDC pretty much songs, sings about rock and roll yeah. and some other things that I don't want to talk about but um, <laughs> they're like they get knocked on all the time because it's the same right. thing so I get it right So I, and I love it still so, <laughs> so if you like rock and roll then ACDC if you like partying right Andrew WK yeah. in any case uh, my favorite non-shark goal song um, I would say is the uh, don't hate me Columbus Blue Jackets <laughs> because they kick it off with ACDC's uh, For Those About to Rock and it's yeah. I'm going to try to do the voice <laughs> go ahead For Those About to Rock <laughs> terrible Fuck. I know I'm sorry <laughs> and then <laughs> Brad Barmore is mad at me right now oh wow uh, sports meets beer anyway um, so <laughs> The, and then they fire off the cannon right, right? which is awesome I uh, love that it's great live because they have real cannons at the real show. cannons. No, they're real cannons. Yeah, but they're not firing cannonballs across the crowd. Not cannonballs, right? okay. but they're firing. They are, yes. You could feel it in your chest. Yes, it's you amazing. can. Yes. In go any on, case. Go on. They do Columbus, that. actually, they have, I think they have an <laughs> actual cannon. Go on. Interruption. Right. I think <laughs> Columbus ahead. has an actual cannon. Yeah, they do. Up. Yeah. No, it, it literally is a cannon. They do this. Yeah. I don't know if it's actually firing or if... I'm pretty sure it's, okay. it's not a pyrotechnic ball, but it's shooting uh, black... <laughs> What do you call it? Black powder. Powder? Yeah. Maybe. So it's, I it's don't know. shooting something. It's a cannon, <laughs> okay? And it goes off, and it's loud, and it's awesome. And as soon as that cannon goes off, then they jump into, like, whoa, oh, 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 oh. I think it was just Loxley. Um, yeah, they need to stick to AC. Yeah, sure, why not? Uh, but they... That's <laughs> why it, it's only half good. It's the whip, I think, by Loxley. Uh, it's, probably. It's, it's catchy. Yeah. So, okay. You, you start off with ACDC. 
Uh, sorry for anyone who is an ACDC fan that I've offended with that <laughs> rendition. Um, you fire off a, a real cannon without a cannonball to kill anyone, but a real cannon, and then you jump into a beat that's like, huh. you know, it's catchy. So that's why I like that one out of the other ones that that, that I've listened to. Again, I didn't go through looking at, or listening to all 31, Yeah, like my esteemed colleague here, but uh, the ones that I've heard on, while watching TV and whatnot, that's yeah. definitely one of my favorite ones. Um, I love Buffalo's new song. Oh, uh, I think they changed it recently in the last couple of years. Uh, DJ Cool, let okay. me clear my throat. No, yeah, uh, it's awesome. I change it. I change it. It's, it's, it's great. <laughs> it comes on. You're like Buffalo, really? Nice. Like the whitest town in America? <laughs> Listening to DJ Cool. All right, I think it's awesome. Nice. Um, I, I think it's great, and uh, it gets me pumped up. That's, and I'm not yeah. even really a Buffalo fan. I guess I'm kind of a closet Buffalo fan. Sure, for loving on them earlier, but um, <laughs> I, I think it's great. I yeah. think it's. Uh, I love. I love the beat of that yeah. song. Like it just. It's. I don't know. It Come on, you got to do a little bit. I did the the ACDC thing. Come nah. On. No. Nah. Haterade. <laughs> you need. Can, uh, can we get one, a glass of Haterade? The other one I liked is uh, Boston. They used the Zombie Nation song. Da 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 da. Da 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 da. You know what oh, I'm okay, yeah, I know, I know, I know what you're talking about now. That, yeah, I there you go. I got right, it. I sang okay, it. Okay, yeah. All right. Thank you. Yeah. I figured if I keep having him try to <laughs> explain which ones he's going to sing eventually. Yeah. Anyway, all right. What's your least favorite one? <laughs> okay, so I do. I didn't know Aaron's uh, favorite uh, beforehand. I know Aaron's least favorite because it's also my least favorite, and it's our least favorite for the same reason. I think. All right. Maybe. Maybe not. I don't know. Our least favorite, if I recall, Chicago. Yes. Okay. Um, it's my least favorite song <laughs> because it is so damn catchy. Yes. And I just hate that. It's I, on loop in my head. Like right now, it's already in my head. It, yeah. Da, 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 da. I can't even do it right. But I think part of the reason I hate it is because Chicago beat the Sharks so many yeah. times in the playoffs, and I'm so sick of hearing that stupid song. You watch it on TV, they score oh. a goal, and you go, and it's so loud, you can hear it. Like, sometimes you can't really hear the goal song on TV. This one comes through because it's so... I think the tune is just so yeah. such high pitch that it carries through the TV. Oh, I hate it. I hate it. <laughs> I hate it because every time they, they score and I hear it, I, I get upset that they score, but then I have to kind of bob my head to it. Right. I just my buddy, <sighs> uh, my buddy Shepard is going to give me garbage for this one. Why? Because he's a big Chicago Blackhawks. Oh, okay. <laughs> Whatever. Hater. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, yeah. Uh, yeah. Moving right along. <laughs> right. Uh, I did have a fun fact story about um, going back to the Dallas Stars. Okay. Uh, being big Pantera fans, they were friends with a lot of the teammates at the time, Mike Madonna, Guy Carbono. Yeah. So they're partying at uh, one of the Pantera uh, guys' house, and Guy Carbono was on the balcony, okay, holding the cup up, and he threw it down to make it into the pool, and he missed, <laughs> and he it hit the edge of the pool, and it semi broke the Stanley Cup. It had to get repaired, it had to get repaired. So now you know why those. Guys in the white gloves carry around the cup all the time because of bad guys like E. Carbono throwing the cup, trying to make it to the pool and missing. You know, there's plenty of stories on the cup. There's great stories. And maybe we'll make that a segment one one yeah. time. We'll talk plenty about stories. Some, yeah, yeah. But for me, hearing that, it it's almost like it's part of the character. Of the cup. Yeah, there's a big dent because Guy Carmen was drunk and threw it off the balcony. There's there's letters <laughs> that are X'd out. Yeah. Just the words that are spelled. Islanders is spelled wrong. Is it really? Yeah, there's <laughs> no S in one of them. It's just Islander? I L. Islanders. Oh. Instead of is, Islanders. Island. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> Temptation Island. Anyway. Um, yeah, it, I think that's just kind of part of the character of the cup. I don't know how to explain it. Like, it, it does, it gives it character, it really does. It makes it more than just a piece of metal that you win. There's there's stories behind it, there's heritage behind it. Definitely it definitely makes a great story that you yeah. can tell later like we are right now. Right, <laughs> but I mean, you never hear about stuff like that with, you know, recycled trophy, like NBA trophy, right? Ugh. You never Every, hear, no trophy in sports come close to the Stanley Cup. And that's, again, like it's it's in its size and in its you know, presence. Funny, you know, and funny, then the Stanley different subject kind of yeah. the Stanley Cup presentation the first person to touch it is the captain of the team mm -hmm. every other sport they give it to the owner of the team the owner yeah really 
What did they do? They're rich. They own the team. They bought the team. <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. They didn't pick the players. They didn't do anything right. hands on. They didn't play. They didn't do anything. Sure. Yeah, no, I, I agree. Give Thank you for your billions of dollars. Here, you get to touch the trophy Give first. Give it to the guys that are working Shh. for it. And, and you know, again, we're rooted in San Jose, working here in the Silicon Valley. It's kind of like, you know, hey, you know, give the pats on the backs to the guys that, that need the pats on the backs. The right? guys in the trenches doing exactly. all the work. So the guys with the bloody faces and, and broken bones yeah. and getting, you know, that's what it takes to win. Yeah. Yeah, anyway. But, I, and, 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 and again, I just I just feel like with with the bumps and the bruises and the extra xing out of letters and the misspellings and someone's dad they tried to put on there one time and they took it off and <laughs> they dropped it and they they do the thing with it the latest thing i saw with the cup was uh, one of the washington capitals guys had it they put a they had a big pan with salt and they <laughs> put the cup upside down Oh, margarita. Mar- they've been a cuparita. <laughs> Stanley <laughs> Cuparita. That's How cool is that? You know, that's like, awesome. I mean, this might be a little disrespectful to the cup, but eh. that's, that's just part of it. That's the character. It's that blue collar, right? I like the people that they get their kids baptized in the cup. I think that's cool. Oh, that's cool. cool. Yeah. Imagine winning the cup and you have a kid and you're right. like, I'm going to baptize my baby <laughs> in the cup. That, that'd last forever. Yeah. And then if you have other kids, sorry. Yeah. You don't get baptized in the cup. Unless we win it again. Right. <laughs> pressure good luck yeah <laughs> okay so uh totally way off topic there but um let's circle back to what we were talking about in the first place which yep. was the goal songs mm-hmm. and uh the first thing that we talked about was if you were to change the goal song what would you do so that's going to be our fresh catch phrase for this week and we're going to have what's it going to be hashtag my uh, sharks song. my shark song yeah my sharks song uh so you tell us uh what you would do what you would change it to, uh, what song you would pick. Uh, if you've got, I don't know, anything else to say about it, really. Or yeah. maybe re- your reasoning why would be good. Or if you like what we picked, yeah, let us know. Even though we didn't really pick anything. Actually. Other than Andrew WK. Yeah, maybe tell us like where in the song that you picked that you would start it because that might make more sense. Uh, if you could tell us like where we should start <laughs> listening to it. Um, not that we're going to be able to do anything about this or submit it anyway, but... Um, just so we know. Good talking point. Yeah, good talking point. Anyway, yeah, uh, hashtag my sharks song is what we're going to do. So mm-hmm. uh, last topic, I think, is last topic? Yep. Okay, last topic is? Bobblehead. Bobblehead. From uh, <laughs> the Warriors. Yeah. Uh, we've seen in the last couple of years, Warriors, Sharks, Giants. Ash-ups. Yeah. Uh, A's. I don't know if the Niners and Raiders have I don't it. think so. Yeah. yeah. Raiders are kind of dead to me. <laughs> after last year's playoffs sure do you the tweet yeah like they retweeted out they're were, they're were rooting for vegas over well, the sharks i mean if they're going in two years yeah but come on you're gonna put your foot in the ground aren't you they were playing the sharks <laughs> it's not like yeah anyway um like you said hockey's a business football's a business right. <laughs> <laughs> So uh, so check out this bobblehead that the Warriors are doing. It's uh, Kevin Durant, and he's dressed up. I That's think a he's a goalie. Yeah, he's a goalie. Yeah. yeah. Um, he's got the basketball and the catching net, I think. Yeah. yeah. I, I think it's going to look great on our set. Oh, yeah. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Never. Warriors. <laughs> um, so hopefully we can we can score one of those and put it on our set. Yeah. Um, but I, I like what they're doing, and we'll see You know what else is going to come out this year. Mm-hmm. Sharks haven't released really anything on what their giveaways will be, but I'm sure they've already got stuff in there uh yeah i'm sure they've got uh a bunch of good ones in the works there um but yeah the kevin durant one looks looks really good i yeah. really like it um he's got the he's got the full-on goalie pads on looks cool he's not in the butterfly like our buddy uh joner back there but um yeah it just looks really cool i like that he's got the basketball and the catching glove. yeah yeah it's yeah. really sick so yeah it looks nice Anyway, something to look forward to. Yep. Yeah. Um, if you guys happen to get any cool bobbles that maybe we didn't get a chance to go to the game, uh, snag us an extra one. Oh, yeah. If, if you, you want to donate any to the set, uh, <laughs> hit us up. We are absolutely always looking for bobbles because we are absolutely under the impression that they will be broken. <laughs> <laughs> we have plenty of room to add. And uh, if we need to, we can get a bigger table. Yeah. Or add some shelving or whatever else. So um, I guess the, I don't know if there's anything else you wanted to no, press on. on that. Okay, cool. We just wanted to mention uh, Durant, um, the Durant bobble. Look forward to it. It's going to be cool, uh, and can't wait to add to the set. But um, we did say, and I teased you at the beginning. Sorry, um, the T-shirt winner, right? Yep. So we 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 picked a winner 
Um, thank you for all those who subscribed, tagged all your friends. We really appreciate the uh, the support. Yeah, helping us grow too. Yeah, and uh, I think you the winner wanna is go ahead. Mm, Megan Bigum. Me. Yeah, <laughs> not me. Oh, Megan. Uh, she commented on our Facebook post. I guess it was the Instagram kicking over to Facebook. Yeah. And uh, she tagged three people and subscribed to us on YouTube. So she was the lucky winner of a new large t-shirt from our producer because he sucks at breaking our bubble heads. <laughs> so uh, congratulations. Yeah, and Megan. Thank you for playing. Yeah, very good. <laughs> thank yeah. you for playing. Yeah. Next time we'll have game. scratchers. It was yeah, a game. It's yeah. really cool. When you say thank you, it makes me feel like we should have like uh, fin factor cups with like the little peel off things and they could put like Monopoly or something. Uh, yeah, that sounds sick. Sounds very uh, doable. Cheap, yeah. Right. <laughs> yeah. Sure. Yeah, we'll get right and on that. We're going to spend all our money on that. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. Okay. So I don't know if there, well, you know, I kind of want to, uh, I kind of want to offer it up right now. What do you think? I have no idea what you're The other about. shirt. What other shirt? Th the other shirt. I kind of want to offer it up right now. Okay. Should we do that? Sure. Are we, what, are we good with two? All right, I think we can do two. We're gonna do two hundred. Two hundred. Yeah. No right. uh, subs. Right. Two, we're gonna give away two hundred shirts. No, I know what you meant. Okay, guys. <laughs> sure. Yeah. We're at a hundred. We're at one hundred and twenty right think. now. Well, one nineteen as of this filming, I believe. Yeah, I think so, we can get to two hundred. Yeah, I've, we've got one more shirt, and I was gonna be selfish and keep it for myself. <laughs> I was totally gonna do that, um, but you know, I, I just think we've got a lot of good good fans. I mean, we got we had a lot of subscribers and a lot of people giving us support. And I just really, I want to give back to you guys. So um, yeah, I'm, I'm good with that. I'm going to go ahead and it'll be the shirt that would have been for me. I'm also uh, a large, I'm not actually not a large. I just like my clothes a little bit baggier. So um, if you if you uh, were in for this time, it'll be the same size. So yeah. So if you missed out on the yeah. first time, you're going to get another chance to uh, win a t-shirt from us. And it's going to be a very rare thing because we have those two shirts and these and, and our hats and that's basically all we have that's it. of those yeah so those were meant to be a swag for uh for us know, cast and crew <laughs> but uh, i'm i'm happy with this i don't need an extra t-shirt so yeah. um, we'll order some more t-shirts for ourselves later yeah. on. i'm not worried about it so um yeah i'm gonna go ahead and, and put that one out on the table for you guys so same thing i think we'll do um tag three people in either instagram or facebook yeah subscribe to us on youtube mm-hmm and I think that's about it. Yeah, and that'll be a long-running thing. So this, we're not expecting this is going to happen, you know, at the end of uh, the next episode or anything that we're going to have a winner. This is, you know, it's a long stretch. So as um, we get to 200 subscribers, we'll uh, announce a winner. As soon as we get to 200, the next show, that's when we'll announce the the winner. Yeah, that's how we'll do it. So anyway, just wanted to put that out there to you guys. So again, subscribe, tag three friends. We'll get you guys another one. Is there anything else that you wanted to? to I think up, that's it. We're good. That's a wrap okay, for uh, episode seven. Episode number seven. Man, we are yeah. trucking along. I Seriously. cannot wait. You know, we're going to be sitting here going, episode number 52 and <laughs> one pretty soon. We're going to run out of I don't fingers. know how to do that. Yeah. yeah. Um, we'll just go like this until we get <laughs> In any case, uh, yeah, once again, I'm Paul. That's Aaron. Yeah. Thanks for sticking around. Thank and we will you. see you guys next week. Next week. Bye-bye. Hey, everyone. Thanks for checking out the show. You can support us by following us at The Fin Factor on Twitter and Facebook. You can also find us on Instagram as at Fin Factor. If you're listening to us as a podcast, please, please, please give us a five-star review. And if you want to support our show, share our episode with your friends. Please leave us a comment of what you thought of this episode. And if you want us to cover anything else, let us know.